Keep going. The 23-year-old from Sausalito, California. Listen to the crowd cheer him on. And how fitting for the National Guard car to win if he can indeed do that. Has he got enough fuel to make it to the end? Half a lap. He's got half a lap to go, and he's the Indy 500 champion. Panther Racing, oh, so good. They finish second here. Twice here, they come again through the final two corners. J.R. Hildebrand. Careful of traffic. He's got to get around the lap. Traffic. What a year from now. Goodness. Weldon, after finishing second the last two years, wins when J.R. Hildebrand hits the wall coming out of four, just as Schechter did. What a tremendous finish. What a drive for Weldon. I'm telling I've been saying it all day that outside lane is a if you didn't know. Absolutely incredible finish here at the 100th anniversary of the Indianapolis 500. Whew. Driving for Brian no, Hurta Motorsport. Stay out on the track, stay out on the track. He becomes the ninth driver with two wins. And while he is celebrating, J.R. Hildebrand is aching inside. Yeah. Let's go back and show you what happened. We talked about being outside the groove, up in the gray. An experienced driver would have just throttled back a little bit and turned around and just got off the gas. As you watch Dan Weldon start to drive by. Look at this. That's just two feet in the wrong place. And it's been happening all day long. He almost won it with three wheels. Can you imagine the feeling that young rookie has? Here comes the 98 to get past, and look at how close it really was. There is Dan, and there comes Hildebrand coming across the line, and look at the reaction, and John Barnes can't believe it, and neither can the rest of his team. Oh, how heartbreaking. What a great drive. Hildebrand is shaking his head. And he still crossed the line in second place. <laughs> now, I'm sure that's the record. He just won the Indy 500 again. Let's take a look at Dan Weldon's team. Look at Brian Herta with the headset. On the right-hand side, fist in the air. And he is with our Jamie Little. He still can't believe it. He just said unbelievable. He was Dan Weldon's teammate when he won this race the first time in 2005. Brian, how did you convince this guy you guys could do it together as a team? Well, I don't know exactly how I convinced him, but Dan Weldon's the best race car driver at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway probably ever. We're so lucky to have him in our car, and uh, we have great support from William Rast and all of our sponsors, and we just won the Indy 500. Can you believe that? I can't believe I mean... You know, we came here to win, and we kept saying we're here to win, but we actually won. Brian Hurd a second time at the Indy 500 as a team owner. He wins it with Dan Weldon, and guy Sam Schmidt's car is the one that goes to victory lane. He will be in victory lane as well. Rick? Well, I'm standing by with uh, John Barnes. Yeah, it's your fourth second in a row, but you came so close. What do you have to say about J.R. Hildebrand today? Well, I think he was incredible. I think he did a hell of a job. The guys did, too. I mean, you know, it... Uh, uh, you know, to come here with the rookie guy and, and uh, his first Indianapolis 500, you know, he'll uh, rethink turn four for a long time. But, you know, he put us where we were at. You know, he drove the hell out of that thing all day long. And, uh, you know, it just was one of those things. You know, it, um, we got to hold our heads up high. When he made that last pit stop, did you think he was going to be able to make it all the way he, to the he end? He really had to save fuel. And again, I mean, he put us in a position to win. You know, he was, we told him what fuel number we had to get. It was almost impossible to do, you know, but he did it, you know. And, and uh, so, you know, he drove the wheels off of it and stuff. I couldn't be prouder of him today. John Barnes, once again, a little bittersweet. Yeah, he got second place the fourth time in a row, but oh, what it could have been.
And Weldon now approaching the Honda Victory Lane. His last pit stop, you heard John talk about, it, was at lap 177. J.R. Hildebrand comes across in second. Graham Rahal at age 22 is third, his best finish ever. Tony Kanaan, that win is still eluding him, is fourth. Oriole Serbia rounds out the top five. This is absolutely amazing. Look at Dan, the emotion as he realizes he's back in victory lane. You know, I had a conversation with Dan just during the week, and he said he's looking for something else to do, some other rides, and he said, you know, I guess what I'm going to end up doing is see his wife Susie getting inside the cockpit. He says, I get up every day and I have breakfast, I exercise, and I work hard just towards the future. I do not have another ride for the rest of the year. And the man down in victory lane is our own Vince Welch. Dan Weldon, I'm surprised it's a good thing he didn't have to drive the car into victory lane because he had such tears coming out. Uh, he, he was wiping his eyes as you see Alex Tagliani lean in and shake the hand and share the emotions of victory lane with Dan Weldon. Take a look at how Dan Weldon managed to make it to victory lane. He was running behind the fastest rookie qualifier, J.R. Hildebrand, when Hildebrand crashed with the lead in turn four, and Weldon inherited the lead and the victory at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Dan Weldon, who won this race in 2005, has won it again. Driving for Alzheimer's, his mother has been re recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and it has, has certainly been something that has weighed heavy on the heart of Dan Weldon. And today, he certainly brings the spirit of his mother to Victory Lane. She was not able to travel here today to be with him. Remember, Dan Weldon did not have a full-time ride. He did not have a full-time ride leading into this season. And it's a bit of vindication, I'm sure, for those that would not present him with the opportunity for that full-time ride this season. Tim Manganello, the chairman and CEO of Borg Warner, will place the wreath around the neck of Dan Weldon. Now, Brian Herta, the team owner, comes in. The tears just streaming down the face of Weldon. team. Richard Thomas and Dave Forge about to present the milk to Dan Weldon. Oh, how sweet it must taste. Brian Herta takes a swig. Now his wife Susie comes up. Everybody enjoying the milk here at Indianapolis in Victory Lane. <laughs> Guys, Dan Weldon is so emotional, they, they could hardly get him to be here to drink the milk. We need to get, we need to get Dan to the front of the car to do the winner's interview. There's so many people that he's thanking. He's so emotional. Dan, congratulations on winning the Indianapolis 500. I know so many emotions must be going through your mind. What did you think when you came around four and saw Hildebrand in the wall? I was just trying to go as hard as I could. I knew it was the last lap, and they said that they, a lot of those guys were struggling on fuel, and um, I just kept pushing, you know. I just want to say thank you, obviously, to my wife for the support through uh, being a part-timer right now. So it's a fantastic achievement to the fans for being here, for, for Brian Herder and everybody at Brian Herder Autosport that 
you know, have uh, just just given me such a dream ride. And uh, there's there's so many other people I want to thank. I want to thank Honda. Honda have always been behind me, 110%. There's there's no organisation like Honda. William Rast. I mean. Uh, Totally my style. It's a great sponsor for me, and I feel like a fashionista. So I'm going to be wearing jeans tomorrow night. I know I'm supposed to dress smart, but I'm going to be wearing my William Rass jeans and uh, you know Curb Records, Big Machine Records, Four Size Solutions. I go. It's been uh, it's been absolutely phenomenal. But I love Indianapolis. I, I I love the people. You know, I love everything about it. The tradition, the history, uh, Firestone. I just, I don't know what to say anymore. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. Take us back to the moment that you actually saw Hildebrand in the wall and you knew you were going to win the Indianapolis 500. I just felt a lot of relief. <laughs> um, obviously, I knew it was okay because I could see him moving, but, um, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an incredible feeling. I've been uh, runner-up the, the two years before this, and I never gave up. I mean, Kanaan nearly put me in the wall going into three, which was, which was very, very interesting, but... Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of great storylines today, and uh, I want to I wanna say hi to my family back home and my mother. And, uh, you know, the Alzheimer's Association for uh, giving me the opportunity to represent them. Um, it's just an incredible day. Congratulations. Dan Weldon, the winner of the centennial anniversary. Indianapolis 500. Taking my kids to Disney, baby. I'm taking my kids to Disney. You could sense the emotion when he talked about his mom. You heard Vince explain why. And look at that elation as the celebration has just begun for Brian Hurd of Motorsports and his man, Dan Weldon, now a two-time winner of the Indianapolis 500. There's one thing Dave's always wanted to do when he retired. The celebration continues here at the Honda Victory Lane. Dan Weldon winning his second Indianapolis 500 on the 100th anniversary of this greatest spectacle in racing. We all thought going into the final corner that that man right there in the four, National Guard Delara, was going to win it. J.R. Hildebrand got too high, tags the wall, and his dream will have to wait for another year. Let's talk to him, Rick DeBrule. Well, needless to say, you can even ask here, Jr. what happened on that last lap? Man, you know, we, uh, we were obviously way at the end of, you know, a fuel stint, and uh, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to get around Charlie. I knew that the guys behind me were coming, and I thought, I don't want to have to stop going through turn four and have these guys back up on me. We, we were super tight on fuel, and uh, so I went to the high side. As soon as I got up there, I just got up in the marbles and, you know, pushed up in the wall. You're a rookie here at Indy. You got to talk about this experience, what it was like to lead, what it was like to run here, your first race, and do so well up to the end. You know, man, like, I, I owe all of it to this team. This team deserved to win today. They've come in second the last three years in a row, and I really didn't want to be the next bridesmaid when it came to us at the end there. You know, if we were running, if we were running great and we finished fifth and that was the best we could get, you know, that's, that's, that's just what you get, you know, but, you know, we have a chance to win for a team like this on Memorial Day weekend with all the soldiers. We got a bunch of people out here this weekend. You know, I felt like I really owed this to, to them and this team, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just a bummer to come home second again. J.R. Hildebrand, I got to tell you guys, after he came out of the medical center, wouldn't stop to do an interview because he said, I want to go talk to my team first. These guys put me here. I need to talk to them. He'll learn a lot from this experience, and he has nothing to hang his head about. He was trying to win his first Indianapolis 500 as Dan Weldon celebrates his second win. Some kisses are sweeter than others. 32-year-old Dan Weldon kisses the bricks for the second time in his fabulous career. And still to this day, Tony Kanaan has not had the pleasure of kissing those bricks even once. He wound up fourth today, and he is with Vince Welsh. Let's go to Vince. One of the sentimental favorites today, Tony Kanaan finishing fourth. What was the defining memory for you in this Indianapolis 500? 
having to drive through the pack twice. But uh, it was an awesome race, great crowd. What a great race, what a way to win Dan Weldon. We had a good car, but uh, we had too much downforce for where we started it. So uh, fourth place, it's not bad for a, a team that we put it together five days before the first race. Tony Canaan, there's no doubt about it, Brent. This guy can drive it, and he certainly can drive it at Indianapolis. Absolutely, Vince. The agony and the ecstasy of the Indianapolis 500. 100 years of unbelievable memories. So here's a question for all you viewers and listeners. What are you going to remember the most? Dan Weldon here capturing his second, or J.R. Hildebrand coming out of turn four and taking it up into the wall. It is that kind of a day. We started with numerous stories, and we wind up with even more. Here was a young man at the age of 23 from Sausalito, California, headed for the checkered flag. He took it to the wall, and still he was able to keep on coming and wind up in second place. The rookie of the year almost wound up with the milk. And instead, it was Dan Weldon flashing through for his second victory for the Englishman. And you know his owner, Brian Herta? Back in 2005, ladies and gentlemen, Herta wound up third. He chased Weldon to the finish line, but he never forgot how good a driver Dan Weldon really is. And when he had a chance as an owner to hire him and put him behind the wheel, that's the man he wanted. So here today, the IndyCar has another memorable chapter as we wrap up the 100th anniversary of the Indianapolis 500. We'll see you again in a few weeks at the Milwaukee Mile. So long, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the 100th anniversary edition of the Indianapolis 500 is green. We're getting ready for history here. Our first double foul restart. Oh, look out, car into the wall. Up in this place because you never know what's going to happen. J.R. Hildebrand is going to have the one on the wheel. No! No! He hit the wall! Dan Weldon is going to win the race! Yeah! That is unbelievable. Yeah!